Good morning, everybody. It's good to have you with us as we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. And the theme for the Advent series this year is God's presence. And the uh, key scripture again, which I'm going to read again, is from Matthew 1, 21 to 23. And it goes like this. Mary will give birth to her son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Elijah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so we are celebrating the coming of Jesus, God taking on human flesh and becoming with us. Last week, we looked at the topic of practicing the presence of God, how salvation, the salvation that Jesus came to bring, is actually a restoration to God's presence that we had fallen short of. In fact, his presence now dwells within us through the Holy Spirit. It's a gift, but it's a gift that must be practiced and appropriated. This week, we are looking at an aspect of God's presence, the healing nature of God's presence, how God comes to bring healing through his presence. In fact, scripture tells us that our God is a healing God. He revealed himself as a healing God to Moses in the wilderness when he said, I am Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord who heals you, Exodus 15. And he promises that uh, when his people repent and seek him, that he will forgive their sins and heal their land. He heals whole societies. In the Old Testament, he healed Naaman the leper, who wasn't even a member of his chosen people. And he healed King Hezekiah and, and many other people. The psalmist says that he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, Psalm 147. That he pardons all our guilt and heals our diseases, Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And uh, through Hosea, the prophet, God says to his people, I will heal their apostasy. I will love them freely. So we see how his healing power and activity is uh, holistic. It's all encompassing. Isaiah, the prophet, in predicting the coming of the Messiah, said he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wrongdoings, the punishment of our well-being was laid on him, and by his wounds we are healed. When God sent his son Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, to earth, Jesus came to reveal the Father, and the major part of his ministry was of healing and delivering people from physical and spiritual sickness. We read in Matthew 4.23 that Jesus went about proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. And then we read how Jesus sent his disciples to continue his work, to proclaim the kingdom and to heal and deliver people from Satan's power. When he began the church on the day of Pentecost, uh, we read how he poured out his spirit upon them and that the, uh, the the ministry of the early church was marked also by healing and deliverance. And finally, in the last book of the Bible, in Revelation, we see the tree of life reappear that first appeared in this the Genesis story. And we are told that its leaves are for the healing of the nations. When Jesus returns at the end of the age, and with his kingdom uh, in its fullness, all healing will be brought to completion. We read in Revelation 21, there shall be no more death or mourning or pain. So this overview of scripture reminds us that our God is a healing God. It's in his very nature to heal. It's his name. I am the Lord who healed you. But just like his presence, his healing is something that needs to be appropriated and growing into. So what is healing? Well, the dictionary defines healing as this, uh, to make free from injury or disease, to make sound or whole, to heal a wound, to restore to health, to heal the sick. Now, the church has not always understood the full scope 
of God's healing work, of God's restoration work through the salvation of Christ. And so to understand and experience the full scope of his healing uh, and the healing that comes from God's presence, I believe it's important to understand the full scope of, of the wounding, of the brokenness that we have. And it's helpful to go back to the story of creation and the fall to do that. It's how one way of understanding the, uh, the, the, the story there in, in, in Genesis is in terms of four kinds of relationships that we have in our lives and how they were affected uh, by sin and the fall and how God's presence can heal them. And those four relationships are the relationships of ourselves with God. Uh, number two, uh, the relationship ourselves with ourselves. Uh, the relationship of ourselves with others. And finally, our relationships um, with creation and nature. God came to bring reconciliation and healing to all of these four relationships through the coming of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. And so let's look at that first one, our, first, our broken relationship with God. In creation, of course, we read that we had we were created for an intimate relationship with God. We read how Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. And so we were created for God's presence. But when sin entered into the world, our relationship with God was broken. We were alienated from God and we were separated from God's life-giving presence. And this is symbolized by Adam and Eve being locked out of the Garden of Eden. In the second relationship, the relationship with ourselves, we read that in creation, uh, we were created in God's image for partnership with God, to be co-creators with God, to walk with God. We had purpose and identity through our relationship with God. We were fully human in our relationship with God. And yet when the fall occurred, God's image in us was broken. We were alienated from God and therefore alienated from our true selves, from our true and full humanity. And so humans started trying to seek identity and purpose and fulfillment outside of God's presence. And we do this in many ways. And the Bible calls this idolatry. And there's various forms of idolatry that we as human, fallen human beings engage in. And we seek uh, that identity and purpose and fulfillment by acceptance by others through power, uh, through money, through pride, accomplishment and status. All these things fail to bring that full uh, true identity and purpose. And in the third relationship, our relationship with others, we see how in creation uh, there is harmony and there is peace in our relationships. We had personhood through community. And yet through sin and the fall, uh, we see how conflict and violence entered into the human condition. And this was illustrated by the story of Cain and Abel. Uh, injustice and oppression entered into the created order. And we see this and even in things like, like racism and uh, systemic oppression. We see that uh, lived out today in our world. And finally, in that fourth relationship, our relationship with creation was also broken. Uh, in the creation story uh, before the fall, we read how we were stewards of creation. God placed us in the garden to care for the garden and to expand the garden and to eat the fruit of the garden. However, when the fall occurred, uh, we were cast out of the garden uh, to till the ground, we are told, by the sweat of our brow. Uh, and our, our call to steward the earth was distorted and uh, instead, humanity has often exploited and harmed creation. And so it's, it's good to see how in these four relationships, uh, how they were all affected by sin and the fall and how God in sending Christ, God with us, desires to restore those four relationships and bring his healing into those four relationships. And this is a gradual thing that needs to be appropriated in our lives. And so looking at the way that God brings healing through Christ and through his presence with us, 
we see that in that first relationship, our relationship with God, through Christ Emmanuel, God with us, that our relationship with God can be restored. Through him we have reconciliation, we have forgiveness, we are indwelt by God's Spirit, we are adopted into his family, and we are born again into his kingdom. And surely this is the greatest healing that we can experience. And so we read in a scripture like 1 Peter 2, 24 and 25, we read, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. All of us like sheep were gone, were going astray. But now we have returned to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. And so we experience that healing in our lives for this first and primary relationship in our lives. And uh, as individually and as a community, the church, we can extend that healing uh, through evangelism, through proclaiming the gospel and bringing that that message of, of, of healing and a restored relationship with God to those around us. In that second relationship, our relationship with ourselves, uh, we also can experience God's healing. And this this is an ongoing process in our lives of that, that full integration and, and coming into our full humanity through God's presence and a full experience of the salvation that he brings. Leanne Payne was a Christian minister and author who uh, had a very unique ministry of healing, in particular, uh, healing to the mind and the emotions and the spirit. She believed that uh, wholeness came from the indwelling presence of Jesus. In fact, uh, she said that often, rather than practicing the presence of God in our lives, we can be found practicing the presence instead of our fallen selves by seeking that fulfillment outside of God's presence. But as we grow in our relationship with God and we grow into mature people, we rediscover our true selves in him. In her book, uh, The Healing Presence, and I just have a copy of it here, The Healing Presence of God, she says this, when I pray with someone who is seeking wholeness, one of the first things I do after invoking the presence of the Lord is to look to see in whom or in what this person is attempting to gain his or her identity. From what person or thing, whether it be money or status, power, accomplishment or sexual prowess, etc., is he or she demanding, tell me who I am? We then know what the person's idol is and what loves need either renouncing or setting in perspective, into perspective and into right order. So we can see how this healing process uh, within ourselves, of this relationship between ourselves, uh, that we, it's a gradual thing and uh, that will continue all our lives uh, until Christ returns. And in that third relationship, our relationship with others, God brings, he gradually brings his healing. Uh, we are born again into God's family and we have a new relationship with others. And we are called to pursue justice and to be peacemakers. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Uh, in an upcoming series in January, we're going to be delving into this whole area in more detail uh, as we look at discipleship and, and justice and how we as God's people are to seek justice in the earth in anticipation of uh, of the final and full justice that God will bring when Jesus returns. And finally, in that relationship with creation, with nature, we learn that that creation is actually included in God's saving work through Jesus Christ. We read in Romans 8, 19 to 21, we read, creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. So we realize through this that God values creation and so should we.
Um, and so in anticipation uh, for the final coming of Christ's kingdom and the restoration of all things, we are to care for the planet and uh, uh, to take that seriously. As I was looking at these these four relationships where uh, we experience brokenness through the fall and, and in which we can experience God's healing, I wondered to myself, well, where, where does the, what is the place of physical healing in this model? And as I thought about it, I, I realized that physical healing is actually connected with all four relationships and is affected by them. First of all, in our relationship with God, we know that uh, in the garden, uh, Adam and Eve had the tree of life uh, to eat from, which, uh, which gave them caused them to live forever. And yet, uh, when sin entered into uh, human condition, that we were barred from that tree. And so we were separated from that tree of life. And so mortality and sickness entered into creation. And in that, uh, the two relationships, the relationship of ourselves with ourselves and uh, ourselves with others, when we experience brokenness in those relationships, uh, that causes anxiety and fear and stress and isolation to come into the human condition. And so that uh, has a, a direct effect on our physical bodies. Um, medical professionals tell us that uh, the majority of our physical illnesses are actually psychosomatic in nature, which means they, they are rooted um, in our emotions and in our psychological illnesses. And... Uh, and in our relationship with creation, uh, we have defiled the creation. And so sometimes this results in, in poisoning the environment, which has uh, an indirect effect on, and a direct effect actually, on our physical health. So in, in all these things, we can see how our, our physical healing is connected with the healing of all four of these relationships. So this model of these four relationships helps us understand the healing God wants to do in our lives, as well as the healing that he wants to do through us. God is a healing God. His presence brings healing in these four relationships. He heals our relationships with himself through Jesus, and this is the greatest healing of all. He brings healing to our relationships with ourselves, that inner healing, where we come uh, to full humanity and full personhood through him. He brings healing in our relationship with others, and he brings healing to our relationship with creation and nature. And we are to be channels of God's healing presence to the world. So even as we are in this gradual process of, of appropriating God's healing for ourselves, we can be channels of God's healing presence to the world around us. So we are to be aware that God wants to bring healing and restoration into these four relationships in our lives, and that we are to grow into that. And secondly, we are to be aware that we, as the church, carry God's healing presence in a broken world. We have the privilege of being God's healing presence in the world in these four areas. And it's so important that as uh, the people of God, as the church, that we grow in unity and love uh, among ourselves so that we can be a welcome place for God's presence. And, uh, and that's through our prayer and through our worship, through our evangelism of proclaiming the gospel, through seeking justice and restoration and healing in the world around us, that we uh, can bring and be channels of this healing presence. I'd like now to invite you to pray with me as we respond to this uh, wonderful truth of God's healing presence among us. Join with me now. Thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus, to be Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for reconciling us to yourself through your son in his incarnation, 
and life and ministry through his death and resurrection and ascension. Thank you for your presence that brings healing to all areas of our lives. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Continue your healing ministry in us and through us. Come and fill us and use us as a community to bring your healing to the nations. Amen. Go in his name as people who are filled with his spirit, as his people who are on a healing journey ourselves, but have the privilege of being channels of his healing to the nations. Let us go in the power of his spirit, his healing presence. Amen.